flowers. Huh? Hmm? Oh no! I'm having an allergic reaction. Triggered my allergy. Too bad they're such pretty flowers. Pollens, while they play important roles in plant reproduction, may be one of those harmless substances that are irritants to persons with allergy, like me. And exposure to such allergies may bring about an exaggerated allergic reaction to sensitive persons that would normally have little significant effect on a healthy person. Oh no! I hope Dr. Dio is not allergic to pollens like me. Let's see what they're up to. Hi, students. It's already dismissal waiting for your ride. Yes, ma'am. Those are beautiful flowers, Alfonso. Whom are they for? Ma'am, Alfonso's in love. Mm -hmm. He's picking flowers for his crush. Before you can pick a flower for your crush, let me first give you a lesson on Flowers 101. Just like the leaf, the flower is an outgrowth of the stem. A typical flower has two main parts, the essential parts and the accessory parts. Let us now identify the essential parts of the flower. The essential parts of a flower are those directly involved in sexual reproduction. These include the stamen and the pistil. The accessory parts are those which are not directly involved in sexual reproduction, but help facilitate it. These include the sepals, petals, bracts, receptacle, and the peduncle. Wow, this is getting exciting. Can we identify the structures in these flowers we have here? Okay, let us identify these accessory parts. These green parts here are called the sepals. And are collectively called the calyx of the flower. These are the petals. which are collectively called the corolla. The sepals, which are collectively known as the calyx, are the modified leaves. Sepals form the outermost part surrounding and holding the petals. Sepals also protect the inner parts of the flower. The petals, collectively known as the corolla, are the brightly colored parts of the flower. Some petals secrete aromatic substances and nectar, which attract insect pollinators.
The receptacle is the part where the floral organs are attached. The peduncle is the stalk of a single flower. Can you identify the sepals and the petals in your flower samples? Yes, ma'am. Here are the sepals, and over here are the petals. Mm -hmm. uh, ma'am, my flower doesn't have a sepal, but it has petals. Yes, some flowers don't have sepals, but they can have petals. Ma'am, mine's too. They don't have sepals, but they have petals. Okay, let us now identify the essential parts of the flower. These are the structures directly involved in sexual reproduction. We have the stamen and the pistil. The pistil is the female reproductive part of the flower. It consists of the stigma, style, and the ovary. The stigma is the reception area for the pollen. It is sticky and velvety in texture. The style is the slender stalk for the passage of pollen nuclei. This is the style of the gomamella flower. The ovary is the enlarged basal portion that contains the ovule-bearing units called carpels. Each ovule contains the female gamete, the egg, and two polar bodies which become the endosperm. The endosperm serves as a food source for the developing embryo. The stamen is the male reproductive structure of a flower. It consists of pollen-containing chambers fused into a structure called anther. Inside the anther are pollen grains, each of which contains the male gamete, the sperm. The filament supports and holds the anther to the pistil. Are essential and accessory parts always present in flowers? That's a very good question, Alfonso. Flowers have variations. Flowers with both essential and accessory parts are called complete flowers. Flowers in which one or more accessory parts or essential parts are lacking are called incomplete flowers. The gomamella flower is an example of a complete flower. A flower with both the stamen and pistil present is called a perfect flower. A flower which has only either a pistil or a stamen is called an imperfect flower. Can you tell me if your flower sample is a complete or incomplete flower? Ma'am, my flower is incomplete because it doesn't have sepals. Mm -hmm. This flower doesn't have sepals. Therefore, it's an incomplete flower. My flower is a complete flower because it has both accessory and essential parts. Very good. Now, do you know why flowers have evolved in plants? Flowers don't only beautify plants. They are there so that plants can efficiently reproduce via pollination. Very good. Flowers enable plants to reproduce sexually through the process of pollination. Pollination is the transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma of a flower. There are two ways by which pollination may occur. 
self-pollination and cross-pollination. In self-pollination, pollen is transferred from the anther to the stigma of the same flower. In cross-pollination, pollen is transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower. Cross-pollination involves other agents like insects, birds, wind, and humans. I think that's the reason why flowers are so beautiful. They have to be beautiful so they can attract pollinators. Not only that, some flowers produce very sweet smells. Others produce nectar too. You are both correct. Mmm, ma'am? What happens after the plants get pollinated? An enzymatic reaction from the pistil stimulates the pollen grain to elongate and form a pollen tube. The pollen tube lengthens and grows through the soft tissue of the style until it reaches the ovary. The pollen tube then penetrates through the opening of the ovary and discharges two sperm nuclei into the ovary. One sperm nucleus fertilizes the egg to form a zygote. The other sperm nucleus combines with the polar bodies to form an endosperm that provides food to the zygote. After fertilization, the ovule develops into a seed and the ovary develops into a fruit that encloses the seed. That's very amazing! So, does that mean a fruit is an ovary of a flower? Yes, a fruit is a ripened ovary. A fruit that develops mainly from the ovary is called a true fruit. Some fruits develop not only from the ovary, but also from other parts like sepal, petals, and receptacle. These are called accessory fruits. So ma'am, a seed is a mature ovule, right? That's correct, Alfonso. A seed is a mature ovule. Hmm, is the living plant found inside the seed coat? Yes, the embryo, which is the tiny living plant of the seed, is found inside the seed coat. The embryo is composed of the cotyledon, the hypocotyl, and the epicotyl. The cotyledons are referred to as the plant's seed leaves. There is one seed leaf in a monocot seed and two seed leaves in a dicot seed. In dicot seeds, the cotyledons contain stored food for the nourishment of the embryo. The cotyledons are the major parts in dicot seeds. In monocot seeds, starts and proteins are stored in the endosperm. Thus, in monocot seeds, the endosperm form the large part of the seeds. The epicotyl is part of the embryo that will grow into stems and leaves. The growing leaf-like tip of the epicotyl is the embryonic shoot called plumule. The hypocotyl is part of the seed embryo 
that will become primary roots as the seed germinates. The radical is the growing tip of the hypocotyl. why many of our food crops like rice, corn, and wheat are monocot seeds. The large part of the monocot seeds are endosperm, which contains starch. You are correct, Ashley. Many of our commercially important crops like rice, corn, and wheat are monocot plants because of the food stored in their seeds. Okay, Hubbers, I hope you admire not only the beauty of these flowers, but also the very important role they play in the continuity of life on this planet. Alfonso, have you made up your mind? Um, Alfonso, isn't that your friend? Bye, Lee Hubbard! Um, mm. Mm. Flowers, fruits, and seeds' importance in nature is everywhere. They aid in plant reproduction. Their nectar serve as food for insects, birds, animals, and humans, and some even have medicinal uses. Without flowers, the world would be dull indeed. But, while they could be something that most people enjoy, some may cause discomfort to others who are exposed to them. After all, some flowers, fruits, and seeds have bad smell, thorns, and even poisonous substances to protect themselves. That's why, we must use caution when handling these nature's treasures at any stage of their life formation, development, and growth. Bye, K-Hubbers! See you next time!